Hello guys, Lucky Jake here and welcome back to another vlog. But before we go to the fixing of our trouble, let me share you first this beautiful sunset from South China Sea. And so for today's video, we will be fixing this 24 volts earth fault coming from one of the analog inputs on our alarm and monitoring system. This AIX35 or the analog input 35. And this analog input is located on the UTL10 near to our generator engines. So come and join me in this new learning. There are a lot of reasons why we have earth fault on board. Some of these reasons is because of the weather. The weather that leads into a corrosion. Or sometimes the seawater goes into our junction boxes or even inside the wirings. Others are because of leakages that goes to the wirings and in the latter breaks or becomes brittle. And based on my experiences, most of the time, the main reason why you're having earth fault in the engine room is because of the vibration. Whenever the main engine is running, as well as the auxiliary engines and some machineries, they are producing a lot of vibrations and this causing the wires to scratch onto the hull or even the body of every sensors that leads into wire cut and this is causing eventually an earth fault. The easiest way to find the fault is to drop off all the breakers connected into the system and then switch them one by one. And then monitor the earth meter and once it becomes normal, then that's the one that is causing the fault. Before dropping off any breakers, make sure to study the system well if it will not affect the propulsion system or the running generators. This is to avoid blackout or even shutdown onto the main engine. So apparently we have earth fault onto our alarm and monitoring system. This is a 24 volts earth fault. Good thing that this Terisaki system has this earth fault monitoring. A color yellow into our analog input X35 in UTL10 cabinet means that we have earth fault. So I went to the UTL10 cabinet which is near to the generator number 3. And opening this cabinet, you will find all the alarms or system that is connected into this analog input card. And checking these alarms, it will not affect our system or it will not cause any shutdown onto our generators. So the first thing that we need to do is to remove these terminals one by one. And then every time we remove one terminal block, we will be calling the other guy on the control room to monitor this analog input card if it becomes normal or not. And then we will just continue removing all these connections until the earth fault alarm into our alarm and monitoring system becomes normal. The main reason why we need to trace this earth fault is to protect this analog input card. As we all know that earth fault causing a high current into the system which leads into breakage of electronic cards whenever we have this fault and if this analog input get damaged then the crew needs to man the engine room because we will be losing the monitoring of our 
alarm and monitoring system for all the generators or affected system connected to the card. After removing these terminals, then the fourth engineer which is on the engine control room informed me that the alarm became normal. So it means that the earth fault is coming from these terminals and we need to locate which is the sensor that is causing this earth fault. Then we need to put back the other terminal so that we will see if it will become normal or the alarm will come back. Because whenever you are tracing earth fault, do not rule out that there is two sources of earth fault into the system. And to double check it, you need to put back the terminals. Or if you are doing a drop on the breakers, then you need to switch on the breakers back except for that breaker or that terminal that has the earth fault. So after putting these two terminal blocks, then I will be focusing the investigation onto the one that is causing the fault, which is there are three sensors connected to this one. And these are the number two GE turbocharger exhaust gas inlet temperature, number three GE electrical power, and the number three generator engine FO inlet temperature. And now the next thing that we will be doing is to use the multimeter and check the resistance on line to ground. And to do this, make sure that you have a good continuity onto the ground so that you will not miss whichever is causing this fault. You may also try putting back the terminal block and then remove the wirings one by one. As you can see right now that the turbocharger sensor for number two generator is in good resistance when it comes to line to ground. And so I continue the line to ground testing of our two remaining sensors. Until eventually I found out that the one that is causing this fault is from this number 3 GEFO inlet temperature sensor. And so I have decided to go and check this sensor and see what is the condition why it is causing this fault. And so I have decided to put back the terminals and isolate this particular sensor. And as you can notice, the signal is intermittent or the resistance is intermittent. This is maybe because the generator number 3 is running. And because of the vibration, that is why it is causing this intermittent signal or intermittent earth fault onto this sensor. And then I went straight to the sensor and opened the cover to see the condition of the connections. I was a bit disappointed when I open it and then I'm having an open line on to this and I am still not satisfied why it became normal after opening the sensor. And so I removed the connections onto the sensor and I want to see the condition of this cable. And then after removing the terminals, I found out this wire cut. So this portion of the cable is touching the gland of the sensor. This is mainly because of the vibration. I am planning to cut the cable and then connect it to the terminals but unfortunately the cable is too short. So I have decided to insulate it properly and then we will see if it will hold in the latter. After insulating this wire cut, and then I have checked again the line to ground resistance from our sensor terminals. After ensuring that we don't have earth fault anymore, then I put back the connections onto our terminal block onto the analog input module. And then I went to the engine control room and checked the condition of this analog input and voila we now have a normal system again 
So that's it guys. This is your Lucky Jake and see you on my next video.